Get all excited. Oops. That's a little bit too excited. <laughs> Praise the Lord for another day today to worship the Lord and to be here. Amen? God's goodness, God's enablement, God's grace that carries us through every day. And so we're thankful every day for the strength that God is giving us, enabling us to move around, open our eyes, see beautiful places, trees, <coughs> sky, stars at night. So just to remind us that God is faithful. Every day we wake up, most of the time when we wake up, we think of our problems right away. Think of work, think of uh, struggles and pain. But let's not forget to appreciate every day, right? Because if God will decide to take you to be with Him tonight, then you will not see tomorrow anymore. Anyway. So we're thankful that every day is here because 10, 15, 20, 40 years from now, many of us will not be here anymore. So <laughs> just to give us a, the right perspective and, and the reality that uh, we're getting old, we're growing old, growing mature, but then the joy of knowing that that we have the Lord Jesus Christ in our hearts. Today we're going to finish chapter 24 of Genesis. I promise, Lord willing, that when we reach chapter 25, after chapter 25, we're going to take a break. I don't know how long, but uh, I plan to give a series about the church. So I'm just giving you ahead of time preparation to think about it. When we discuss about the church, we're going to talk about why is it important to be a member of the church, or why people are just church hopping, and, and why problems happen in the church. So those were the topics that we're going to talk about in that series. But for now, let's, let's open our Bibles to chapter 24 of the book of Genesis. I'm going to start reading from verse 15. This is a long chapter, and bear with me, this is the Word of God. If you fall asleep while I'm reading, that's fine. I'll wake you up right after I read the passage. 67 verses. But we're going to start at, chapter, at verse 15. Genesis 24, verses 15 to 67. I'm reading from the New International Version. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bithuel, son of Milcah, who was the wife of Abraham's brother, neighbor. The woman was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever slept with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please, give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels too, until they have had enough to drink. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well and drew more water, and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring weighing a becca and two gold bracelets weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bithuel, the son of Milcah, or born to Nahor. And she added, We have plenty of straw and fodder as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on a journey to the house of my master's relatives. The young woman ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now Rebecca had a brother named David. And he hurried out to the man at the spring. 
As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arms, and had heard Rebecca tell what the man said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camel near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared a house and a place for the camels. So the man went to the house, and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were brought to the camels, and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my servant abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, male and female servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, had borne him a son in her old age, and he has given him everything he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I live. But go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, What if the woman will not come back with me? He replied, The Lord before whom I have walked faithfully will send his angel with you and make your journey a success so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan and from my father's family. You will be released from my oath if, when you go to my clan, they refuse to give her to you. Then you will be released from my oath. Verse 42. When I came to the spring today, I said, Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See. I am standing beside this spring. If a young woman comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink, and I'll draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, Please, give me a drink. So she quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll draw your camel, and I'll, draw, and I'll, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bithuel, son of Nabor, whom Milka bore to him. Then I put the ring on her in her nose and the bracelets on her arms. And I bow down and worship the Lord. I praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. So if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me. And if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bithuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here is Rebekah. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord had directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver and jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up next, the next morning, he said, Send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, Let the young woman remain with us ten days or so, then you may go. But he said to them, Do not detain me, now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way, so I may go to my master. Then they said, Let's call the young woman and ask about and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men, and they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, 
May you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the cities of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her attendants got ready and mounted the camels and went back with the men. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer like the high Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He went out of the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife, and he loved her. And Isaac was comforted after Abraham. And Isaac was comforted. Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Oh, I think I it up. But then, um, okay, just just keep reading. I fixed up my print here. But then. Uh, that he was comforted after that. That's where the chapter ends after uh, Sarah's death. May the Lord bless the reading of His word to our hearts. Let's bow for prayer.